Hi there, my name is Julie Fafan Balzer, and today I'm going to show you how to make a gorgeous gate fold card with a matching envelope. Did you know that it's super easy to import any SVG file into Scan and Cut Canvas in order to change it over to an FCM file so that the Scan and Cut can cut it out? And I'm going to show you how to do that when we make our gatefold card. So I'm going to go right up here to the SVG button and I'm going to just choose my file and now this is going to allow me to go into my files. There you go. That's my gate leaf card SVG. I'm going to hit OK and it's going to import it in. Now not all SVG files are, can be imported but most of them can. So here you go. Now I'm looking at my file and it has a bunch of extra junk that I don't want. This is super easy to deal with. I'm just going to select the parts I don't want and hit delete. And I can just do that again and I'm just hitting delete on my keyboard. It's super easy and look at that. I like to always move the file that I'm cutting because you never know what's hidden behind it. And do you see this pink square that was right behind it? We never would have found that if I hadn't moved it. So it's always a good idea to move your files around and make sure there's nothing hidden underneath. So once I've deleted that and I'm sure it's just what I want, I can of course resize it here in Scan and Cut Canvas, but I'm not going to take the time to do it. I can do that in the machine. So now I'm going to hit this big blue download button and it's going to allow me to put this onto a USB drive. That's that little stick thing that you can put into your USB hub on your computer and then into the Scan and Cut machine. So I'm going to right click or I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hit Option click and that's going to allow me to rename this whatever I want and save it onto my disk. So why don't we save it as gate leaf card. Thank you FCM right there. We're going to hit save and that's a file that already existed on my computer so I'm just going to replace it with that. And I'm going to close this and it's as easy as that. Now we're ready to go to the scan and cut and start cutting. I'm going to go ahead and choose pattern into my saved data and then I'm going to pick the USB icon and it's going to take a moment to retrieve the data off my USB because it's loaded with lots and lots of designs. And then once that comes up, I'm going to scroll through until I see my image and I know that we called it the gate leaf thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Great. I'm going to hit OK. And now I want to resize my image because it's a little bit small. So I'm going into the editing function and I'm going to resize it. And now at first this machine is not going to let me resize it. It's going to stop and I'm going to be like, oh, it's broken. And actually, the reason for that is because the scan and cut is smart enough to know that there's no more room left on the mat. So as soon as I drag it to a different area where there's space all around it, then I'm going to be able to resize it to what I want. Now, I know that I want my card to be seven inches high. So I'm just going to, oops, go up there and then just adjust back until it's exactly seven inches high. And there we go. And so it's seven by 10. And now I can hit OK. And now I want to to just drag it onto my mat anywhere that looks good to me, hit OK. And the next step, of course, will be scanning in the paper that we're going to cut it from to make sure that it's perfectly placed. So I'm using a middle tack mat and I'm going to go ahead and pull the dust cover on off of that. And then I'm going to put my paper down and I'm going to smooth it into place. And it's always a good idea to take your spatula tool and just make sure that your paper is really adhered down to the mat so that there's no slippage when you're cutting. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead, open the dust cover on my machine. I'm going to double tap into my machine to make sure it's really in there. Holding with one hand, press the load button. And now I'm ready to scan in my paper and the machine's just going to take it in and scan it. And you may be wondering why I am scanning this big 12 by 12 piece of paper in. And the answer is, is because it's a good habit to get into because you never know when you're going to want to know whether it actually reaches the edges. So there you go. You can see it. And here's a little trick, which is under this settings, you can actually dull out the color intensity and now it's much easier for me to see. Now before I cut this and I can see that it's going to cut perfectly and if I really wanted to conserve paper I could bump this up so that it's just on the edges. I'm actually going to add another design and I'm going in now to the shapes that are here in your machine and each of these is actually a cover 
for lots of other shapes and you can scroll through all of those. But I'm gonna choose this shape that's kind of here because I want a piece for my envelope that matches my card. And that size is perfect for me, but if I didn't like it, I could adjust it very easily. So once I have it, I hit okay. I only want one of them. I'm gonna hit set and there it is. But of course I don't want it to cut out of the center of my card. I want it to cut out separately. So now I'm dragging it down to a separate area and I can again conserve paper if I want. And now I'm ready to cut. So I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna hit cut. I'm going to make sure that my blade is set correctly and all my other settings and then I'm going to press the start button and we'll be ready to go. So now that the machine's done cutting, I'm going to unload my mat, close the dust cover, and I'm going to go ahead and pull off. I like to pull off the larger piece of paper first. That way I just make sure that's out of the way. Then here is the piece which we're going to glue on our envelope. And now the card is going to come off. And most of those little bits have come out, but if there's anything that's left, you just need to poke it out with your finger. I also want to show you a quick trick that I have for getting these bits off the mat. Now you certainly can take the spatula tool and scrape them off, but you can go a little bit faster if you just take some packing tape and then go ahead and make sure you hold on to one end because you don't want that packing tape to be permanently on that mat. But just go ahead and smooth it down over that paper and then when you lift up, not all, but most of those little pieces will come up with the packing tape and that just makes it a little bit faster as you can see. And then I would go in with my spatula tool and just get the rest of it off. So we have our cutout and now we need to score it so that we can fold it into a card. So I'm working on a scoring tool and all I'm going to do is I know that I want my card to be two and a half. That's what the flap is. So I'm putting it right at the two and a half and I'm taking my scoring tool and I'm running it right down there. Now if you didn't have a scoring tool you could certainly just use a ruler and some foam or frankly just fold it in. But I like the neatness of using the scoring tool and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It's right there at two and a half and I'm coming right down again with my scoring tool right down that line. I always think you know you don't need to buy every new craft tool on the market. There's a way to make it work with what you have. So now that I scored, I'm ready to fold. So I'm going to go ahead and this is a trick that a friend of mine taught me that really works. Take the part that has the cutouts. It's the weakest part. Place it against the table and then fold the part that's stronger that doesn't have the cutouts up. And that's how you get the neatest and cleanest fold that you're going to get. And there you can see it right there. Now if you really want to get a clean fold, I'm going to take this guy. This is a bone folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that just to increase my fold. But you know, you actually have a kind of a bone folder attached to you already. It's called your thumb. And you can always just take that and smooth down as well. And same thing on the other side. I'm going to take the weakest part, put it up against, and then I'm going to fold my fold. And then if you want to get a little bit fussy, you can just, you know, moving it around, making sure that it's exactly right on that score line. And what a score line does is it just helps make a fold neat and clean, or at least that's the goal, right? So then I'm going to again take my bone folder, either the one attached to my hand or the one that I'm using right now, and I'm going to go ahead and just use it. And what I'm going to have when I'm done is this fabulous gate fold card. But wait, there's a little bit more. So you remember that we cut out that extra piece. And what that extra piece is perfect for is for decorating the front of just a plain envelope to make it a little bit more fancy. And I want to actually show you one more alternative because I'm all about the options. And that is, so first of all, I made this card a different color and you can see same shape, just a different color of cardstock. But for this one, what I did is... Can you see? I put an extra piece of cardstock right in the center of my gatefold card so that you could really see that design pop. So whether you want to make it pop or you're happy with a more subtle look, either way, I hope you'll try out making a gatefold card. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, I hope you'll visit my website at balzerdesigns.typepad.com and of course the Scan and Cut website as well, scanandcut.com.